Hi everyone, and welcome back to the Hockey Journey Podcast. Episode number 91. Have you done your postseason evaluation exercise yet? Presented to you by OnlineHockeyTraining.com. I'm your host, Coach Lance Pedley. If you're new here, please make sure you subscribe so you won't miss out on any future episodes. Before we do a little reflection back on the winter hockey season and begin the conversation, if you want to learn more about me, my hockey experiences, that I have the world's largest database of off-ice stick handling, passing, and hockey shooting drills, what I know, and most importantly, how I've been helping hockey players get really good with a stick and puck, just head on over to OnlineHockeyTraining.com, that's OnlineHockeyTraining.com, and gain instant access to my 10-part video series, where I'll show you everything. Consider it my gift to you. Lastly, if you live in Minnesota, or are visiting the state of hockey sometime soon, and you want to schedule an in-person, off-ice stick skills lesson, I'd love to have the opportunity to show you my little world. Go to SweetHockeyCoach.com, that's SweetHockeyCoach.com, and watch the video on the homepage for instructions. Thanks, and I look forward to working with you sometime soon. Well, for most of you, your hockey season has come to an end, or will be in the coming weeks. If you really think about it, the end of the hockey season is a bit cruel, isn't it? Only one team per level is crowned champion at the end of the year. Everyone else goes home, I don't want to say as losers, because I've never liked that word, so let's say the majority of us go home as non-winners at the end of the season, and it always stings, doesn't it? I've done three or four episodes on goal setting in the past year and change. If you were one of the players who answered the call and put pen to paper, and physically wrote down what you wanted to accomplish this past hockey season, did you achieve what you hoped for? Have you spent time doing some kind of postseason evaluation exercise? If not, you should, and here are some suggestions for you to make it super easy if you've never done it before. So let's begin. Taking some time to reflect on your season is a super important part of growing as a player no matter if you're just starting out or if you're a pro. It gives you a chance to look back on your performance and see how far you've come, as well as figuring out what areas you need to focus on next. When you're reviewing your hockey season, it helps you to recognize your strengths and areas where you could improve. By figuring out what you did well and where you could have done better, you can set some realistic goals and make a game plan for next season. This kind of reflection can also help you better understand how you contribute to the team as well as how you can be an even better teammate in the future. Looking back on your season also gives you a chance to take stock of your mindset and attitude toward the sport. You can ask yourself questions like, did I stay positive even when things got tough? And did I communicate well with my coaches and teammates? Figuring out how your attitude and work ethic impact your performance can help you improve in those areas and become even a better player. Another thing that's great about reviewing your hockey season is that it lets you learn from your mistakes. Instead of beating yourself up over things that didn't go well, you can figure out what went wrong and make a plan to do it better next time. This kind of mindset helps you grow as a player and reach your full potential. Finally, looking back on your season reminds you why you started playing the sport in the first place. Because it's fun. By thinking about the things you enjoyed most about the hockey season, you can reignite your passion for the game and get excited for what's to come. So go ahead, take some time to reflect on your season. You'll be surprised at how much you can learn from looking back on your journey as a player. If you wrote down your goals at the beginning of the hockey season, you'll be able to quickly see if you achieved what you had hoped. If you didn't write down any goals for the past hockey season, or have never done an end-of-the-season evaluation or reflection exercise before, here's a bunch of questions that might help with this process, with the hope that it will spark even more questions to help further your growth and development. So here we go. Question number one. What were my personal goals for the hockey season, and did I achieve them? For example, a player may have aimed to score a certain number of goals or assists, or improve their speed or accuracy with the puck. Question number two. 
How did I contribute to the team's success and what could I have done better? A hockey player might reflect on how they supported their team both on and off the ice, such as encouraging teammates during practices and games, and identify areas where they could have been more supportive or helpful. Question number three. What skills did I improve on during the season and what areas do I need to work on? A hockey player may have improved their stick handling, skating, or shooting skills during the season and could identify areas where they still need improvement, such as defensive positioning or face-off techniques. Question number four. Did I have a positive attitude and work ethic during practices and games? This question encourages hockey players to consider whether they approached practices and games with a positive mindset, worked hard during drills and scrimmages, and maintained a good attitude even when facing challenges or setbacks. Question number five. Did I make an effort to encourage and support my teammates, both on and off the ice? Hockey players may consider whether they provided positive feedback to their teammates, helped build team morale, and supported their teammates outside of the games and practices, such as by attending team events or organizing team bonding activities. Question number six. Did I communicate effectively with my teammates and coaches? Effective communication is crucial in hockey, and players may reflect on whether they were clear, concise, and respectful when communicating with their coaches and teammates on the ice and during team meetings. Question number seven. Did I understand and follow the team's game plan and strategies? Hockey players may consider whether they understood the team's plays and strategies, followed them during games, and effectively communicated with their teammates to execute the plan on the ice. Question number eight. Did I maintain good sportsmanship and respect for my opponents? This question encourages hockey players to consider whether they respected their opponents during games, refrained from engaging in unsportsmanlike conduct, and upheld the values of fair play and respect for the game. Question number nine. Did I manage my emotions well during games and did they affect my performance? Hockey players may reflect on whether they were able to control their emotions during games and whether their emotional outbursts or distractions affected their performance or team dynamics. Question number 10. Did I attend all practices and games and did I arrive on time? Attendance and punctuality are important for team success and players may reflect on whether they were present for all practices and games and arrived on time. Question number 11. Did I take care of my body by eating well, staying hydrated, and getting enough rest? Hockey players may reflect on whether they maintained a healthy diet, drank enough water, and got enough rest to support their physical and mental health throughout the season. Question number 12. Did I learn and improve from my mistakes rather than dwelling on them? Reflection on mistakes is an important aspect of growth and hockey players may reflect on whether they learned from their mistakes during games, practices, and scrimmages and applied those lessons to their future play. Question 13. Did I have fun playing hockey and do I still enjoy it? The question prompts players to reflect on their overall enjoyment of the sport, whether they found it fun and engaging, and whether they still have a passion for the game. And question 14. Did I challenge myself to try new things and take risks on the ice? Hockey players may reflect on whether they took on new challenges during the season, such as trying out new positions or techniques open-mindedly, and whether they were willing to take some risks and try new things during games and practices. Hopefully those suggestions got some other thoughts swirling around in your head. It's a cool exercise and I highly encourage you to give it a try. If you're a parent of a younger player, this is something you can all do together at the end of the season. It can be fun because every family member has their own version of an event or memory. Let's say my family is going to talk about a youth hockey tournament one of my kids was playing in. I didn't really think about it at the time, but I had the coach's perspective and the father's perspective because I was coaching at least one of my boys for 17 years. 
My wife, on the other hand, had the mother's perspective and also the coach's wife's perspective, which I never really thought about until my wife brought it up one year after being in coaching for close to 10 years. She said, do you know what it's like to be the coach's wife? And she's sitting next to the parents of a kid who hasn't played a shift in the third period because you benched him? That probably was an awkward moment. Sorry, sweetie. Let me get back on track here. The family hockey season reflection exercise is awesome if you have a younger player or have never done it before. Give it a try and let me know how the experience was for your family. With that being said, what do you do when you're done with the exercise? Well, I'll tell you what you need to do. It's time to set your next hockey objectives, map it out from end to beginning, and start executing the plan on a daily, or at the very least, weekly basis. All I ever want to do here with any episode I create is to help you or your player become the best version of yourself you can be. I'm passing on information or introducing you to people who have done really good in the hockey arena and provide you with proven success strategies and techniques that have been passed down through the generations. Here are three of my favorite performance enhancers I've used recently that you should give a try if you haven't been able to fully achieve your short-term goals. Because if you can't achieve your short-term goals, you'll never have a chance to achieve any of your long-term goals. So here's what's worked for me in the past and currently. Number one, write down your goals. I've mentioned this before in previous episodes. A study done by Dr. Gail Matthews a psychology professor at Dominican University of California, shows the true power of writing down your goals. Matthew's sample group included men and women ages 23 to 72 from around the world and all walks of life. Entrepreneurs, educators, healthcare professionals, artists, lawyers, and bankers. She divided the participants into two groups, those who wrote down their goals and those who didn't. The results were clear. Participants who wrote down their goals achieved those desires at a significantly higher level than those who didn't. In fact, she found that you become 42% more likely to achieve your goals and dreams simply by writing them down on a daily basis. End quote. So write down your goals. Number two, go small and do it every day. You want to accomplish something big? Go small and do it every day. We all know that there are 24 hours in a day and 60 minutes in each hour. But do you know how many minutes are in a 24-hour period of time? For those of you who aren't math geniuses like me, let me get the calculator out. Okay, 60 minutes multiplied by 24 hours equals 1,440 minutes in a day. What's 1% of 1,440? Well, 14.4. So not even 15 minutes. You want to accomplish your big goal or dream? Go small at the beginning and start by investing 1% of your day into your new venture. Do that every day for 30 days and you'll be amazed if you can do it for the full 30 days what you can achieve while letting the compound effect do its thing. Just for fun, if you invest 15 minutes of each of your next 30 days into becoming better at something, How much time would you accumulate after the 30 days? Any guesses? Well, here's what you would have totaled. 15 minutes times 30 days equals 450 divided by 60 minutes equals 7.5 hours of skill acquisition goodness. Give it a try, please, because it works. And number three, calendar. Paint your future. This could be my favorite and most effective way I reach my semi-long-term goals. I paint a calendar on a big piece of cardboard four to six months at a time, and I hang it in my office or kitchen area so I can see it every day and all day. I work out of the house, so this accountability creation is always breathing down my neck, whispering in my ear, can you X out your day today? At the end of every day, I look at my success list for the day which is usually three to four things max, two to three of them are every day, and each takes roughly 15 minutes generally to complete. If I complete the list, I get to put an X over the number for the day. Once I string five or six days in a row, 
I never want to break the chain, and I see how many days in a row I can get. My intention is to do things every day, but it never works out that way as life gets in the way. My rule is to never miss two days in a row, so by the end of the month, you should have more hits than misses. I've had a calendar going since the beginning of January and continuing till May 11th. That's when my wife and I are heading down to Florida for a couple weeks for a little R&R. She does taxes. I don't see her very much from February through April, so I just work every day as well until we leave for some sand between the toes. I'll put a link in the description to the picture of my current painted calendar so you get an idea of what it looks like. I don't know, but when I start doing this, I find myself being way more consistent and accountable to myself. Lastly, there's not a better feeling at the end of the month having more X's than not, knowing that you crushed it, which then fuels the start of the next month, rinse and repeat. Well, that concludes another episode of the Hockey Journey Podcast. I can't thank you enough for stopping by and listening. I hope you enjoyed diving into and learning more about the benefits of doing some type of post-hockey season evaluation exercise. If you think there's someone in your circle of family and friends that might like this episode as well, please share it with just one person. It will really help me in growing this hockey community. Again, I appreciate you being here. Don't forget to subscribe, rate, or submit a review. I hope to see you back here soon. And do me a favor, make someone close to you smile today. All the best, my friends.